is considered to be among the best of the best. Most glaring would be Jackie Parker, quarterback. You know, um, just was it Jackie Parker now, or was it Warren Moon? See, that's the question you're asking yourself. So now you're putting Bruce in with those guys. That's that's impressive. Dan talks about Bruce's intensity and the pleasure of playing beside him, not across from him. Playing beside him was funny because you you're always bringing as a football player as much intensity to the game as you can. But there were times where you just hear him. You know, you're in a huddle. As I'd be standing here in a huddle, and he'd be standing right, right behind me, watching. You know, so we're waiting for the quarterback, and I just hear him mumbling to himself. He's like, "Physical, got to get physical, got to get physical," and you knew that this is a very intellectual man who just really, really prides himself on how, you know, he's he's smart and he'll, he goes through problems and he really takes things apart and he really makes decisions, great decisions on not only how he plays football but how he runs his life. And you know him that way. But you also know that you're just really glad you're not the other guy because he's you've played beside him long enough to know what he can do. And that physical guy beside you, you know, like I said before, raises your game. But it also, it's just, it's good to have that guy on your side. He was fairly quiet. I mean, when it came game time, he was he was pretty focused. Um, you know, he he didn't say much. You could you could tell, um, you know, that he was kind of you know building building up some some angriness inside of him and didn't say much about it. But off the field, I mean, he he was a pretty easygoing guy. I mean, he he laughed, he joked, um, you know, was was pretty pretty laid back. But once you once you saw him in the locker room before the game and out on the field, you could just see in his eyes that he was ready to go. We have a bit of film of Bruce Beaton in action. Offensive linemen are sometimes a bit anonymous, so watch for number 62 in Edmonton, green and white, and watch the intensity he displays on each and every play. And now, introducing the starting offensive lineup for your Edmonton Eskimos. Tough news, Jason Moss back in, had trouble with the snap, this ball picked off. George White has the interception and tops it up. Bruce Beaton's got the ball. That's the second time that Saskatchewan has caused a turnover and given it right back. Well, it's a Breakaway speed. When you think of the number of Nova Scotians who have played in the CFL, you start to rate them in your mind. Alan Wetmore verbalizes what many of us think. There's been a lot of great football players come out of here. I don't think anybody's going to have as successful a career as Bruce had. I'm not sure anybody's going to be as diligent uh, uh, towards their job as Bruce was. And I think he was a consummate professional, and I think that was the backbone to the success in his career. So, I mean, geez, I'm a high school football coach now, and I would love to come across another Bruce Beaton. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome a man with two Grey Cup rings and a fistful of all-star designations, a man who won't brag about that but lives life modestly, as an example to everyone around him to work hard, be disciplined, and watch good things results. Our newest athlete in the Nova Scotia Sport Hall of Fame, Mr. Bruce Beaton. To present 
The certificate, we welcome Patricia Van Zutphen of the Port Hood Development Area Society. The pin presenter, a teammate of Bruce Beaton for many years with the Eskimos, and they became great buddies, and now his business partner, Dan Komiski. So when Ed, Ed Hervey said that you'd occasionally do things outside the rules, he, w he was just kidding, right? Well, I could show you something now if you want. <laughs> no, no, may, maybe after the show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Bruce, you had such a, a wonderful run, and you hear players and ex-teammates talk about you glowingly. When you look back, what's a, a highlight or two for you? Uh, just getting to play with the guys I played with. I mean, uh, you know, the people that you saw... Alan Wetmore, uh, certainly Jamie Pepper, uh, Danny Laramie, Ryan Carey. I mean, we did have an outstanding group of people in university. And then, uh, and then when I went on to the pro level, um, you know, D Dan Komiski was unbelievable to play with, you know, Mark Dixon. I mean, all those people taught me things, right? Whether it was stuff about how to train, how to take care of yourself, nutrition. Uh, and, it, it, and it all mattered, and it, it's, it's the reason I'm here today. So. Every year you played pro, you came home to train in the off season, and when you retired as a pro, you came home here to, to live. Was that ever in question? No, no. I, uh, I mean, I grew up in Cape Breton, and uh, from the first time I drove into the valley, I just, uh, you know, was astounded how how beautiful it was. I mean, I grew up on a farm, so I had a great appreciation for, for just how beautiful it was there, and and so this way I get to live relatively close to my family and. Uh, I met a beautiful girl in university, uh, my wife Michelle, and, and we got married and we're raising a family in, in Nova Scotia. So, yeah, it was never, it was never anything but Nova Scotia. And then I also, like I said, some of the friends that I had met in university that really understood training and nutrition and all that sort of stuff at a world class level. They they had a huge impact on my career. Um, you know, Alan Wetmore, training with him, playing with him. Uh, Ryan Carey is another guy I played with and who lived in Nova Scotia. And certainly Jamie Peppard was the biggest influence on all of us and, and, and still is to some degree. He's the owner of that gym that we, we still train in. So that was a, uh, Dan's right about the fact that that was a huge competitive advantage for us, which is, which is funny because, you know, usually in, in Nova Scotia you don't have as good of resources. But I, I felt like I had a real advantage on everyone in the league. You mentioned your love for Nova Scotia and the fact you always came back and you've won a lot, a couple of great cups and several all-star selections, but what does it mean to you to be a member of this particular Hall of Fame? It means a lot to me, mostly because of who's in the Hall of Fame. Uh, I, I just, I like that place a lot and I, I like the athletes that are in there. I just find that something about Nova Scotia just seems, I, I, I imagine in any Hall of Fame you see a lot of hard workers and a lot of people that that overcame adversity and all that sort of thing. But I don't know, some of those old stories in the hall right now, it just seems like there's that theme really, really runs through it, that overcoming adversity theme. And uh, so it's, a, it's an honor to be, to be part of that group. Well, Al McInnes last year from Port Hood, Bruce Beaton this year from Port Hood, and I'll see you outside. You can show me that move all in right. about 10 minutes. <laughs> right. Bruce Beaton, folks. Thanks, buddy.